gap, standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap, one love for all So we all can make it in Standing in the gap, standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap One love for all So we all can make it in Studying to show ourselves approved Rightly to find the word of truth Increasing our faith to envision our freedom So we all can glorify our God Standing in the gap Standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap One love for all So we all can make it in Make it in Make it in Make it in Want to hear him say good Good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, enter to the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say, good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, enter to the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say, good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, enter to the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say, good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, Wanna hear him say, hear him to the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say, good and good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, hear him to the joy of the Lord Of the Lord, joy of the Lord Of the Lord, joy of the Lord Of the Lord to our Christian education ministry that we call Standing in the Gap USA. We tackle some of the more difficult and, and uh, interesting uh, issues in Christianity by standing on God's Word. And we call it Standing in the Gap because of the gap that's been created between God and His people by the world and by the by the evil one, by demons who are trying to draw his people away from him. And it's a constant battle. And God is looking for those who are willing to stand in the gap, to bring his people back to him, but by standing on his word. And so that's what we do. And we're in a study at this point in time that we call the spirit work. We've been in this study for a while. We're about at the end of it. But we talk about angels and demons and spiritual warfare and all that kind of thing. And um, it's been a very interesting study. And um, we're going to proceed today. We're not going to keep it that long today. But we are going to deal with uh, an issue that we need to address in reference to this study. But before we get into any of that, as always, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you, Father, for putting a head of protection around us, Father, in this spiritual warfare that is going on to claim our immortal souls, Father. We thank you, Father, for the spiritual weapons that you have given us in order to allow us to wage this battle, Father. And we already know that the battle is won, Father, because with you on our side, who can stand against us? So, Father, I want to thank you for that. We ask you to bless all those who find their way to this live broadcast. And then all of those who will review this at a later time. So, Father, we ask you to bless our, this ministry, Father. We ask you to bless this broadcast, Father. We ask you to open our hearts, open our minds, Father, and allow us to take in your word, Father, and stand in the gap. We ask all this in your name and for your sake. Amen. 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 Yeah, as I 
indicated, we, uh, we've been dealing with uh, the spirit world. It's necessary because a lot of people don't understand the spirit world, don't think it, it exists, don't understand it's all around us and it's influencing us and there's a battle being raised. So spirit world. And we, we focus on demons and angels, demons and angels, and those demons that we allow into our lives to, to bring hell with them. And we know that we have our, our allies, the angels who are fighting that, those demons and creating that, that uh, spiritual warfare. We've been dealing with sex and the all the tributaries of sex. So, and, and, and we'll get into that, but before we do, I want to introduce you to a person who who keeps us on the on the up and up, who keeps us on the uh, on the internet, on social media platforms, and and who prevails even against uh, 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 my shark comments. And we're not gonna get into that today, but uh, <laughs> she <laughs> she seems to always be able to overcome those. And and it's it's not it's not as easy a job as you might think. I'm up here on the on the screen and um, and she's in the in the background, but she's doing a lot of the heavy lifting, and I thank her for that. I love her for that. And of course, I, I guess I have to because I'm talking about my wife, Marvel. Marvel, what you got? Uh, good morning, Saints. I'm up here in the corner. Yeah. Okay. Uh. We're working on things still. We're working on things, but good morning, y'all. Happy Saturday. It's cold outside. I guess we are getting into fall, and thank God that we are getting into fall. Um, it's a good thing. Uh, we're we're headed into the holiday season, and uh, I'm wrapping up my show, and so uh, it's all good. Um, if you look in the chat box... There is a link to the outlines. We're in outline number 12. Also in the chat box, there's a link to join our Facebook room live where you could actually participate. We would be able to see your face, hear you talking. I would love that if you can join us in the uh, chat room. And if you can't, then please put your questions and your comments into the chat box and let's keep it going interactive let's keep it going interactive god bless you all enjoy the class today all right thank you thank you so much um i put this graphic up because it's uh our theme is the doors that we allow uh, our doors to our soul that we allow demons to come through a lot of times unknowingly, a lot of times on, on purpose. And so, you know, the demons behind the door are just waiting for you to give them an opportunity, a crack. And they will march right on through. And as we say, bring hell into your life. So we've, and, uh, we've been on the, on the sex door. We have, we've had other doors that we talked about. We'll review that at a later time. All the doors that we've, uh, I guess, exposed and I, and I can just interject, interject. Um, all of those doors are listed on our YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel, Standing in the Gap USA on YouTube, has a playlist called Angel, uh, The Spirit World, Angels and Demons. Every class that we presented is in there. And it's, it says, you know, in the description, it says what the class is about. Um, and also on Facebook, um, on our Facebook page, in our video section, all of those Facebook Live events are recorded there. So you can go back and review anything you want uh, from this uh, study as well as the other ones that we have online. Okay. Thank you for that. We, um, and, I, and I encourage you to do that if you, if you have not been following us each week on this to go back and take a look at that because I'm sure some of those will impact you or, or impact your life. So it'll be good for you to take a look at that. All right. So as I indicated, this um, this graphic shows how we open doors to our, to our souls and um, allowing demons to come in. I uh, 
I, uh, I present that graphic, as, you know, not to be all that um, intimidating, but you know, sometimes you need to you need to make sure that uh, you understand there are demons at the door. They they want to bring hell into your life, and if you allow them, that is exactly what they will do. So maybe this graphic will bring it home home even more for you. And as the demons are sitting there waiting outside uh, for you to open that door, someone else is uh, waiting at the door to your soul, asking you to open the door and allow him to come in. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And like the demons, he, he, you have to open the door for him. And once you come uh, open the door for him, he brings salvation into your life. So you have to be careful who you let in to your in in into that door to your soul. If you open that door, and then what comes in looks something like this, then you uh, open the door to the wrong person, <laughs> to the wrong thing. <laughs> because Jesus says, "My sheep will know my voice." And so if you if if, if you know Jesus. And you'll know his voice and you won't let things like this come into your into your life. Now, as we talk, we said that what we're dealing with is a battle. A battle between the angels and the demons, between God and, and Satan um, that is being waged in the spirit world for your eternal soul. To claim your eternal soul. And it's spiritual warfare. We're all familiar with physical warfare and bombs and grenades and tanks and, and uh, warplanes and all that kind of thing. Won't do you a bit of good in this type of warfare. You have to understand your enemy and you have to understand the weapons that you're able to use in order to fight and win this war. Because even though the war is already won, and the, uh, the demons and the devil are trying to claim as many souls as they can before... That, uh, they lose this battle. And don't let that be yours. Don't let them claim yours. Because as, as as this war is raging, one thing we have to understand, war is war. And this battle means war. Got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail. But I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day. But I'm watching while I pray. Understand that the battle lines have been drawn. The war is raging, and you can you can try to sit on the on the sidelines if you want, but this isn't a war that you can flee to another country because somebody instituted a draft. This this you're involved in it, and whether and the way you fight it, and the way you uh, deal with it, and understand it, accept it, and all that is going to determine how you fare in this war. All right. Okay. Now we've been uh, we just finished last week our uh, uh, discussion on uh, abortion. Prior to that, homosexuality, and so we we've, we've got probably one more week. I wanted to see if we could uh, wind it up um, uh, today, but it's not going to work. So and we're not going to keep it that long today. But next week we'll wind it up with something that is. It's very important. One last door for you. One last door. And uh, uh, but today, but today, we're going to deal with something that um, is is um, associated with uh, opening that that sex door, that door to sex. And almost all of the things. Once we got into sex, all of the doors that are that were are there. And uh, we talked about our latest sex. And so is this one. This one. The one next week, not so much. But this one, yes. What are we talking about? We're talking about soul ties. Some of you may have heard about soul ties. And I um, need to explain what we're talking about when we're talking about soul ties. It's a, it's a door. It's definitely a door that, uh, that, 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 that you allow to be open. 
grab that handle, open that door, and boom, there you are. <laughs> Demon. Because that's not the voice of Jesus you're hearing on the other side. And then anyway, let's talk about soul ties. If you see this graphic, it um, ties uh, are to different people, as you can see. There's a tie that goes to one person, then to another person. And then on down the line, and, and the concept of soul ties is that um, you have a tie to each of these each of these people, and the ties to your soul. And although it can be a uh, soul tie, can be uh, formed by things other than sexual uh, uh, soul ties. We're going to talk about sexual soul ties, and of course, we're going to talk about the reason for them, what happens. And all that. So hopefully, hopefully this will be very informative to you. But um, in order to understand soul ties, let's talk about a couple scriptures. Scriptures that will impact upon this. Matthew 19, 4-6. Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. So when, when you think about that concept, it's called that there's something mystical that happens when the two become one flesh. And when they're talking about joined to his wife, then what you're talking about is sexual intercourse. Okay? Joined together to his wife, two shall become one flesh. And that's widely interpreted as, uh, as, as, as connecting you with that, with that person. You're no longer yourself. You're no longer alone. But the two have become one, and it says one flesh. One flesh. And we go to another scripture. 1 Corinthians 6, 15, 17 says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. And, and so there's something mystical about that, of course. Your body is a member of Christ. Shall I then take the member of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. And, and, and what that's talking about is sex outside of marriage. And so when you... When you uh, when you join yourself with a harlot, um, then that two becomes flesh thing works again, whether you're married to the person or not. And that's what uh, um, Paul's talking about, First Corinthians, that you you can make yourself a member of a harlot. God forbid, and people, you know. Sometimes that's a hard concept for people to understand. So you have to understand the mystical part of this is that it 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 happens. It happens. Now you can you can you can try to look at the science of it. You can try to look at break it down and all that. But you still get to the point where it happens, whether you understand it totally or not. Whether science can understand it totally or not, or or science may just dismiss it. Who knows? I remember having a discussion about what is a harlot? So when Paul says be becoming a member of a harlot, what is a harlot, Brother Art? Well, that's someone uh, <laughs> that you're not married to. That's for sure. You're having sex with someone that you're not uh, married to, that can become a harlot. That person is a harlot. It could be an adulteress um, or whatever. And basically, if you just think about, am I married to that person, then then uh, uh, understand harlot. Okay, but it's a female person. It's not a male person. And or... that's what this scripture is talking about. Okay. But it does go believe. both ways, doesn't it? Yeah. It's hard for me to believe that they're just talking about going one way with that because there's nothing there's nothing good about the other side either so all right
So ho hopefully that's uh, some clarification. But if, if, if you want to, well, how did the two become flesh? You know? And, and you know what? There's, I, I can tell you that, that there are some theologians who don't think that soul ties are biblical. That um, they're simply a new age interpretation of scripture. Uh, which the Bible, uh, and, and which also involves witchcraft. Witchcraft. Ooh, we know we don't want to be involved in no witchcraft. God but, forbid. <laughs> and, and, and the way they justify it is they say that the Bible only refers to flesh being joined together, not, not souls being joined together. And um, it, it's only talking about strong feelings between people such as maybe uh, a husband and wife, or, uh, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever. Or maybe even like David and Jonathan, if you remember the story of David and Jonathan, how close they were. And 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 so in order to try to understand that, I, I wanted to go back to something that we talked about way at the beginning of our study on the spirit world. And that was the tripartite man. And then tripartite man is uh, three parts to you as an individual, is your body, your soul, and your spirit. Your body, your soul, and your spirit. And what we want to concentrate on, we know the flesh is the, is the body, okay? And as you remember, the scripture said, the two become one flesh. But let's talk about the soul. Let's talk about the soul. Now, if you remember, the soul is made up of three parts. Your mind, your emotion, and your will. That's, that's the uh, soul. That's your soul. Your mind is, is uh, you know, what you think about and all that. And that's, that's your mind. And uh, your emotions, you know what that is, your emotions. Uh, and your will is what you choose to do. And, and basically, your soul is you. Because that's the part that even uh, upon death uh, remains. Your soul. Now, where it goes is a whole different thing, but um, that's this is called the parts of the soul. Now, when I think about people who say that the uh, soul ties are not biblical, and, the, uh, and actually you won't find the term soul ties in in the Bible, it's an interpretation of the of the scripture theologians uh, give us. But think about this. When you're thinking about your soul, what is your soul? Uh, thinking uh, can be uh, is, is a part of your soul. And it can be affected. It's being affected. You see the spirit in the middle? God's spirit is trying to impact your soul so that you think right, your emotions will be right, your will will be right. But also understand the world is coming in through your body, through your senses, and it's trying to affect your soul also. It's trying to affect your soul also. So um, here's, here's, here's the question. The question is, um, if um, your soul is can create a soul tie with someone else, how, how could that be? And I, I just want you to think about it rationally a little bit. Could your thinking be affected? by what's happening in your body. Could it be because that's where sin resides, right? In the flesh. And the world is 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 affecting you through your senses, so it comes in through your body and it's trying to control your soul. So could the think could your thinking be affected by that? I think so. Well what about your will? The things you choose to do and all that. Oh, it's fighting for that. It's fighting to control that. And uh, what about your emotions? Can your emotions be affected by, by um, uh, uh, what's happening outside? I would think so. Well, I know that the scientists have proven that uh, sexual activity has a direct effect on your emotions through the different 
um, physical, um, what are those things? The different um, chemical, brain chemicals that get released. Oh, okay. Du during the sexual, the, I, I don't think they're hormones, but there's some kind of chemical. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm trying to even think of what they what the names of them because they've got some different ones, but um, all of those directly affect your emotions. Exactly, exactly. They come in from what your body's doing. The question is, could your could your soul, the three parts of your soul that are being affected by your body, create a a a bond or a tie with someone else, with someone else? So just 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 think about your relationships with people, and um, um, have you ever had a had a relationship with someone whereby you felt they were your soulmate, or 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 that relationship or bond is so strong that even though you're no longer with that person. That every time you come in in contact with that person, it triggers something, and it, it it definitely could trigger some some response in your body, you know, if you're attracted physically to someone, but also can control the things that you choose to do, or your emotions. Like I love that person at one time, and now I see them, and and, and something's happened again, and 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 bringing it all back and I, I still have feelings for this person. I still love this person. It could be even that I still hate this person too. Um, and affect how you think about that person and all that. And, and not necessarily about others. So, although the Bible says that the two become one flesh, clearly, the soul can be affected by two Become in one flesh. Since the flesh is where sin resides, and through it the world, devils and demons, are constantly trying to influence, influence you and your soul. And if, if, if the devils and demons can do it through this other person, because of that tie that you have, that bond that you have, then even though I know some of the theologians say that there is no... Um, such thing as a, as a soul tie, then, you know, there's some things they can't they can't explain by that explanation. They can't explain. One other thing is is uh, why a woman who is who is uh, physically beaten or emotionally uh, uh, devastated by a man won't leave him, or if she does, she comes back. And you say, there's something going on there. Because nobody in their rational mind would do that. But it happens. And it happens a lot. So, think about that. Think about that. And, and to get us into this, I've asked Marvel to uh, uh, um, play, a, play a video to kind of prepare the ground for the next part of the discussion. One more soul tie and that is the soul tie is when you get an emotional and a physical attraction to somebody you had sex with. And this typically happens during a fornication or a time when you would have a sexual relationship or a one night stand with an opposite sex or same sex. Genesis chapter 34 verse 4, it says this, And his soul was strongly attracted to Dina or Dinah the daughter of Jacob and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So this guy Shechem, he was attached, he was tied to this young lady through the act of sexual intercourse. When people have sex, they develop usually soul ties. That's when you know the soul tie is ungodly, is when you have had a sex with somebody who is not your spouse, who is not somebody that you married to. You can develop ungodly soul ties and this guy 
developed such a strong soul ties he was willing to adopt another religion upon himself circumcise himself just so he can be with her he almost like became blind to everything else and when people develop soul ties sometimes you can develop a soul tie to somebody you don't even like you don't even want to be with somebody who abuses you somebody who makes fun of you somebody who hurts you and you will somebody will look at your relationship and say how in the world can you stay with this person it's very simple they don't want to they keep going back to that person because the same thing that happened to Shechem he was strongly attached attracted he was bound by that relationship through the virtue or through the means of fornication that's why when you commit sin the devil wants to use the sexual connection that you have had to create a bond an invisible bond a drawing not just for you to experience that affection and that arousal and that orga orgasm no 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 it's not just that there's a deeper spiritual bond that develops when you have sex with somebody that's why the bible tells us another emotional tie or soul tie is connection between your spouse and i believe it's a good soul tie Genesis chapter 2 verse 22 it says therefore a man should leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh you become one flesh and every husband and wife has a tie then this tie happened through first their emotions and then it literally gets solidified through a sexual intercourse a lot of times when a person goes through divorce they also have to go through counseling and they have to go through prayers of renouncing, of removing that soul tie from the spouse that cheated on them, left them and betrayed them. And different people might follow a different, you know, prayers or different procedures on how they do that. But the idea is pretty much the same. You need to recover, you need to heal, you need to uh, experience forgiveness, you need to experience deliverance, whatever the language you want to use. To describe that process it's pretty much the same process for each person is you need to be disconnected from the person that you were connected to because of being married to them so another soul tie is we have with believers bible actually the bible actually says that we as believers are knit together in colossians chapter 2 verse 2 it says that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love attaining to all riches at the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God both of the Father and of Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 19 it says and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. So to recap soul ties can be good or bad bad soul ties are the ones where you feel bound to that person and you feel like if they leave you you can't live you can't move forward bad soul ties are the ones that are formed out of sin like we've seen Shechem and the daughter of Jacob through fornication bad soul ties are the ones that create a sense of bondage like we see that it happened with Jacob and Benjamin his life was bound in the life of his son and if his son would die he would die as well good soul ties are, are simply at times when you love like David and Jonathan where you love your best friend where you love your children where uh, you love your pastors or your leaders where you love um, your spouse or you love other believers that's a good soul tie but anytime you're operating out of a place where you're not knit together to Jesus but you are strongly attached to another person and you can't live with them that could be an ungodly soul tie that needs to be broken we should be free to love people but we should not be bound and manipulated and in bondage to people maybe you're watching this right now or you are listening to this right now and you have had a sexual relationship with a guy or a girl and right now you seem to not be able to move on maybe you have had a person that you were connected with a spiritual leader who was maybe your spiritual father or a mentor and relationship has ended but you have so deeply been connected to them that you you're like dying you can't even move forward to experience new mentors in your life and maybe there are these words hanging over you by your 
spiritual leader saying like if you leave me you're a betrayer if you leave me you are such a you are a traitor I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen young people who've been cursed by their mentors because they developed this tormenting relationship with their mentees almost like ownership almost like possession and almost like this thing you're with me for the rest of your life and you can't go and grow somewhere else you're with me and that's it sometimes we as young leaders feel that toward our leaders without being in, that being imposed by them because we get so in love we get so fascinated by a particular man of God or a woman of God we listen to their teachings we go to their conferences and we spiritually get nourished by them to the point that we become so dependent on them that when they're gone we feel like or maybe we feel like it's our time to transition out of that relationship with them that we've had through consuming their content and receiving from them that we feel like no we won't be able to grow spiritually that's it my life will will hit a ceiling I won't be able to go forward without this spiritual leader and it's dangerous because you can develop a soul tie to a spiritual leader and to some degree a, a honor and, and respect is good but the moment you become bound that you cannot move forward that you feel confused that you feel lost that you feel hopeless that you feel helpless that you feel anxious that you feel depressed that you feel down that you feel like your life is over my friend that's when you know you have placed somebody else instead of God and you've developed an ungodly soul tie Joshua honored Moses but when Moses died Joshua went forward Elisha honored Elijah but when Elijah went to heaven Elisha moved forward disciples loved Jesus but when Jesus went to heaven they went on to build and spread the message of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit don't be like Jacob who has his life wrapped in the lad don't be like Shechem who was so strongly attached to this girl that he slept with don't do that live a life where you honor God in your body in your soul in your spirit and avoid getting so deeply attached to people that you can't live without them live your life only like that with the Holy Spirit where you're attached to the Holy Spirit where you have a soul tie to the Holy Spirit but you don't have a soul tie to other people in an unhealthy ungodly manner okay so I wanted to, uh, I, I looked it up and it is a hormone. The main one is called oxytocin that gets released during sex. And uh, according to Wikipedia, the rush of oxytocin is involved in the physical part of sex that then boosts emotions like love, affection, and euphoria. So then when I look at your um, your chart and there's a an emotional tie that is being built between two people that's going straight into your soul exactly well that is a great analysis uh, i thank you for that i'm your color commentator there you go. There you go. <laughs> see that's why that's and 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 that gives us uh, support for why i do think that soul ties exist and that there can be a connection between um, uh, one one soul and another soul. And, you know, the bottom line is whatever you call it, it's clear there is a connection. This is a good question for our live audience. So if anybody's uh, watching right now, please put in your into the uh, chat box. Do you believe there's such a thing as soul ties? Uh uh, godly or holy soul ties as well as unholy soul ties and if you want to get really honest have you gotten involved in any soul ties I'd love to hear that would be a good topic for discussion well let's let's kind of recap and bring it all together um, what happens when two become one flesh the Bible speaks of what we know today as soul ties in the Bible, it doesn't use the word soul ties, but it speaks of them when it talks about soul being knit together, becoming one flesh, etc. A soul tie can serve many functions, but in its simplest form, 
It ties two souls together in the spiritual realm. Soul ties between married couples draw them together like magnets. While soul ties between fornicators can draw a beaten and abused woman to the man which is which in the natural realm she would hate and run from. But instead she runs to him. Even though he doesn't love her, treats her like dirt. That happens, people. That definitely happens. In the demonic world, unholy soul ties can serve as bridges between two people to pass demonic garbage through. This is not to say that soul ties can uh, cannot be formed in other ways other than fornication, close relationship, David Jonathan, um, vows, commitments, agreements between people, marriage vows, sworn oath. And, and, and that's not to say that some ties, soul ties are not good. But see, what is, what, and like I said, whatever you call it, there's a bond or bridge that is created between two people that, as Marvel has, has proven, definitely affects your soul through fornication. And that bond is not severed simply by physically separating from that person. That's, and, and, and obviously, if it's a spiritual thing, then just separating is not going to do it. That bond is um, it's a, it's spiritual and sometimes people call it mystical bonding. A part of that person is now a part of you. And it's called a soul tie. I'll ask you a question. And maybe this will uh, get some people to understand it. It makes, you know, kind of impacts me. It says, um, why is it that people can usually remember everyone with whom they've had sex? Why is that? You know? And then, there are some persons that you just don't want to be tied to. In, in, a, in a bond, whatever you want to call it. And an example is demonic. What do you mean? You see, when you, uh, when you have sex, a door is open in the spirit of the world, allowing demons and, uh, to access your soul and your body. Demon. So, so let's say you have a demon that you have allowed into your life because you open that door, the demon is there. And let's say that other person does it. But then you have sex and the two become one flesh. Do you think the demon's not going to take advantage of that and go and try to go through that door that's just been opened to that other person? Hmm. If you think that, then you think very, very uh, lowly about demons. <laughs> that they might have some some boundaries or something. And that's the problem. When, if, if whatever that, that tie is, soul tie or whatever you want to call it, it opens a door for transferring demons. Demons will take any opportunity you give them to take advantage of you and whoever you're with. Sister Michelle put something in the chat box. She said, yes, I have done both. But it was during the time that I was not walking in the narrow path. God loves the truth. And you know what, Sister Michelle, you are right. Whoever is listening now or whoever comes on and listens later, if you've gotten to be an adult, you've had some kind of experience like that. And um, you can try to fool yourself or you can try to fool me, but you can't fool God. Other than Thank you for sharing. Thank you, thank you, uh, Sister Michelle. Very timely. The um, the other thing, it opens the door to demons, but also, what if that person is under curse? The, the Bible talks about curses. Now, you may not believe in soul ties, but it talks about curses. <laughs> and so you so you join in one flesh with uh, someone who's under a curse. Do you think it's possible that curse may be passed on to you? Do you want that to happen? I you don't think. want it to happen, that's for sure. I would think not. But see, understand, this is spiritual warfare that you're involved in. And all your understanding of 
of physical warfare and how things happen in the physical realm, if you don't understand that spiritual realm, then you are open to curses, demons, etc. Now, let's say, let's say you have a soul tie. And let's say you need to break that soul tie. So, what do you do? There is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Well, okay. Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. So, uh, how do you break soul chain? Uh, soul tie? If any sins are committed to cause this soul tie, repent of them. Fornication is perhaps one of the most common ways to create these nasty soul ties. But if gifts were given by you to you by the other person in connection with the sin or unholy relationships, such as rings, flowers, cards, etc., bras, <laughs> whatever, uh, get rid of them. Why? Because every time you see that, that brings you right back into that that tie. If you're still friends or you're in a relationship, uh, and just now is and 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 just now it's no longer an ungodly relationship like say a boyfriend girlfriend relationship um except you've repented of and forsaken the unholy practices you used to do in your relationship then it's probably not necessary to destroy all the gifts and things that you've been given i you know i would still encourage you to get rid of anything that symbolizes the ungodly in the relationship though such as if a guy gives a girl bra panties with his initials on them uh, you know while they're in this fornication relationship get rid of them burn them bury them in the back whatever you want to do get rid of them now uh, and I would encourage you uh, no, I wouldn't encourage you to hang on to such things that symbolize the sin or that are wrong to give each other before marriage. And say, say, before marriage, you were in this fornication. Okay? And during that time, you know, giving gifts back and forth and all that kind of thing, um, you know, symbolizing that, that fornication relationship. Then you get married. And now you say, well, I've, I've cleansed those things and all that. Well, you really haven't. And every time you look at them, it does bring back the fact that, okay, that was a uh, simple relationship and all that. And you don't need to think about that because you're thinking you're thinking now uh, is, is cleansed. You don't want to be brought back into that. So you might want to get rid of that stuff too. Things such as flowers and love letters given during adultery should be destroyed. Should be destroyed. And be careful of any rash vows or commitments made that play the part in forming this soul tie that should be renounced and repented of and broken in Jesus' name. No vows. And, and Proverbs tells us a little bit about the vows, the things we say, those rash things we say. Whoso keepeth his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. Meaning, keep your mouth shut. And uh, protect your soul. Don't be saying all kind of things that you know you don't mean, or you don't, uh, or don't mean anything, and all that. So, other thing, all this is in breaking the chains and all that is forgive the person that you uh, have that you were in this so have this soul tie. Because a lot of times your soul tie is because you hate that person. Remember emotions. All right. It's and a thin line between love and hate, I heard. Very thin line. But how do you get around that? Forgive them. <laughs> forgive them. And they, and they, they say <laughs> forgive them and release them. And release them. Exactly. Exactly. And let them know that. And some believe you should, you should, 
you should renounce the soul tie verbally and in Jesus' name. Now, this is where uh, some of the people that don't believe in soul ties think you should uh, 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 steer clear of, of, of soul ties or thinking about soul ties. Because, see, some think that here's how you break that chain and release and uh, uh, through verbally that 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 you have to verbally say in Jesus name I now renounce any ungodly soul tie formed between myself and this person as a result of fornication or I now break and sever any ungodly soul tie formed between myself and that person as a result of fornication and I do it in Jesus' name now this is where I kind of go with some of the people that say, say, wait a minute, this soul tie stuff, where'd you get this from? <laughs> the soul tie part, I, 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 I think is, is, is very real and very accurate. How you sever it, do you have to, do you have to repeat these words? I mean, wouldn't a, wouldn't a prayer suffice? <laughs> I was just thinking as you were talking, I, I think I would just pray to Jesus and ask Jesus for forgiveness, ask Jesus to help me, ask Jesus to release, mm -hmm. release those bonds and those chains and those ties, and then thank and praise him for it. So I don't go along with this so much, um, but... Um, and, and the reason I do is because after I was doing the research on this, some, somebody brought up something that was made me think about it. And it says, isn't this an incantation or something? <laughs> whereby, whereby you're saying, you don't have to say this in order to be relieved from it. Jesus can relieve you from this, whether you say this out into the world or not, because he knows what. Not what you say so much. But your heart. But your heart. So, and 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 the person that brought this incantation up said, incantations are witchcraft. <laughs> if you ever seen uh, uh, anything on witchcraft, they had this book and they and they pronounced these things and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? I don't even want to go down that road. I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> I no, I don't, I don't even want to get close to it. I am not going down that road. The bottom line is this, uh, whatever you call it, whatever you call it, Jesus can deliver you from it. And if you, you've been taught that your whole life. And so it doesn't change just because you have a soul tie, a soul tie. And, and, and um, remember that all that stuff they were talking about, depression and I can't go on because of this person and all that kind of stuff that is not biblical okay that's demonic that's demonic demons demons are using that against you so cut the ties break every chain in the name of Jesus and you don't have to go out and, and uh, shout it out to the world so everybody can hear you, you know, Jesus can probably handle that through your prayer <laughs> Without your incantation. <laughs> All right. Now that's soul ties. Hopefully that gives you some insight on um, on that. And as I said, next week we're going to uh, get into the final uh, door that we're going to deal with. Honey, can you put that slide up, the soul tie slide with all those connections and everything? Because there's another thing. is is not so spiritual per se, but... Um, it's a thing to think about. Go ahead. When you look at that graphic there and you see all those connections, you know, you got the soul ties, but what about the STDs? That's an example of, of something that transfers, right? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you get with somebody who has a whole bunch of... Uh, associates you might say <laughs> <laughs> and all that you don't know what you're getting into you definitely can get some physical and if if uh if you can get physical then why would you think you can't get the uh the spiritual mm -hmm. 
the soul tie. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, 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 even though some people think it's some kind of new age type of creation by uh, looking at the Bible and all that, when, what they can't explain to me and trying to make me think there's not soul ties is, well, how come there are strong bonds and ties between people that, that seem to surpass a physical flesh type situation? Can't really answer that. I think that's why they call it mystical. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> God don't need to explain everything to you. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, um, I had an experience this week where people were asking me about, you know, our Christian ministry and, you know, do you believe this and do you believe that and do you believe the other thing? And what I said is that, well, I'm an unapologetic Bible-believing Christian. That's who I am. So if the Bible says it, then that's what I believe. Absolutely. And I was going to bring that up, too, because, <coughs> because of that incident. And then understand that the devil is, is and demons are at work 24-7. Even when you don't expect them to be coming at you. Okay? They'll come at you. When people, uh, some people look at our, our ministry here and, you know, join in and maybe look at the outlines and all that and see something in there they don't like. And then uh, want to, as, as the graphic says, throw fiery darts at you. I, and I had an example in my office this week where a client came in and I had my cross on and... Uh, she came in and explained to me that she was a Hebrew. I said, okay, you're a Hebrew. She said, and you are too? I said, well, shoot, I didn't know that. I'm a Hebrew too, huh? <laughs> and then she said, yeah, and when I saw that cross hanging from your neck, I wanted to let you know that ain't no Jesus. Ain't no cross. Oh, that's a lie. Well, as 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 the graphics indicate, that's, that's just the spiritual warfare. And shoot the fiery darts at you. And my my defense is my faith. And of course I cut her off right then. I cut her off right then. And so my faith is stronger than you coming in here telling me you're a Hebrew. <laughs> and and you know what else too, um, with those fiery darts, you you have to you have to stand on your faith. But that's what we're talking about when we say standing in the gap. Absolutely. That's exactly what we're talking about. That's what this ministry is all about to say. We know the world is 2022, almost 2023. And, you know, Jesus went up to heaven a long time ago, over 2,000 years ago. But God's word is still God's word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, society says no matter what people say no matter what and and i'm gonna give a teaser for our next uh, study no matter what the constitution and the laws of the united states say we, we have to stand in that gap stand in the gap and as we always say sometimes it gets lonely down there in that gap you know Ooh, you got lonely for me this week yeah and 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 the thing about being down in the gap on the stand on god's word is that it's a strong foundation you're standing on. You ain't, you're not on the sinking sand. <laughs> and, and and if God is with you, who can be against you? So, uh, saying all that to say this. Understand, the darts are going to come. The darts are going to come. And they're going to come sometimes from uh, uh, directions that you, you, you're not anticipating and all that. <laughs> They'll come at your back. <laughs> And you have to just stand strong on the word of God. And that's what we do. All right. We have one more, one more class. I'm our uh yeah, class in this uh in this area of spiritual warfare. And, and this is a new door, right? It's a one new door we hadn't talked about. But it's one that each of you <laughs> each of you have an issue with, I'm sure. Or at least had an issue. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna say where you're where you are at this this time, but it's, it's something that uh, you can't get away from. And I, I'll just give you a hint. It's called the door of I. 
And you, you'll think about that all week, but I'll reveal it to you next week. All right. Marvel, anything else? I don't have anything else. This was a good class. And, I mean, I think that um, I, I thank Sister Michelle for, you know, being being transparent and honest and, and sharing uh, in the chat box. Um, uh, I Like I said, if we've gotten to the age of becoming an adult, we've had some kind of experience. And uh, just thank God for Jesus and for his salvation and his forgiveness that allows us to pick up from wherever we were and go forward in, in him, in faith, and standing in that gap. Right. Breaking every chain. Every chain. All right. We, um, uh, next week, we will we'll continue with the spirit world, angels and demons, and uh, we'll keep on standing in the gap. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you, Father. Thank you for opening our hearts and opening our minds, Father. And thank you for explaining some things to us, making us think, Father. Thank you, Father, for the hedge of protection that you put around us during this spiritual warfare, Father. We love you, and we thank you. We ask you to bless everybody that, that, that tuned in live, everybody that will review this at a later time, Father. May your word go forth. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Standing in the gap, standing for Jesus. Standing in the gap for family and friends. Standing in the gap. One love for all, so we all can make it in. Standing in the gap, standing for Jesus. Standing in the gap for family and friends. Standing in the gap, one love for all, so we all can make it in. Studying to show ourselves approved. Rightly divine the word of truth Increasing our faith to envision our freedom So we all can glorify our God Standing in the gap, standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap one love for all, so we all can make it in, make it in, make it in, make it in. Want to hear him say good, good and faithful servant. Want to hear him say enter into the joy of the Lord. Want to hear him say good, good and faithful servant. Wanna hear him say, hit him to the joy of the Lord. Wanna hear him say, good, good and faithful servant. Wanna hear him say, hit him to the joy of the Lord. Wanna hear him say, good, good and faithful servant. Wanna hear him say, hit him to the joy of the Lord. Wanna hear him say, good, good and faithful servant. Want to hear him say, hit him to the joy of the Lord. Want to hear him say, good and good and faithful servant. Want to hear him say, hit him to the joy of the Lord. Of the Lord. Joy of the Lord. Of the Lord. Lord. Joy of the Lord. Of the Lord. Of the Lord.